So I tried to make a VR game, and this was probably not a good idea. <laughs> I tried to do this. What the heck are these? After getting everything set up with following some tutorials, I got the very basics of VR walking. I like to see real life do this. Boom. Basic interaction with objects has finally been achieved. This opens up a lot for what we can do with only a few changes. With only a sphere that you can pick up, you can essentially make something like bowling. You do have to manually reset it each time, but still. And you see, this is part of the fun. But here's the thing, you can go bowling in real life, and also hang out with friends while doing it, which is probably a lot better than this. See look, it's as good as new when you go play with the ball that you lost over the edge, so instead, we play bowling the old fashioned way. Yes. Well, it can be fun to do stuff you can normally do in real life, but in VR, I think it's best to make something that you can't experience in real life. Take horror games, for example. While they are fun to experience, it's definitely not something you would want to experience in real life. I love my part-time job. But virtual reality gives you something really close to that experience, of experiencing horror nearly in real life, but from the safety of your own room. Unless if you try to throw a grenade at a headcrab while playing Half-Life Alex and accidentally punch a wall and have your hand hurt for a good few days. Good thing I never do that, right? Here's the thing though, I have never made a horror game before, and there's no way I'd be able to make something actually scary. No, look! It's our friend, he's so nice! Okay, no, he's not nice! So, naturally, let's try a different approach to this. Have you ever played something that was so funny and not actually scary that it actually felt scary? That's the best way I, I can think of how to describe it, but here's the main enemy. This is the closest I'm getting to meeting a online friend. This is my friend Joba, at least his profile picture. He doesn't look like this in real life, at least I don't think he does. The issue is though, I have no idea on what I want to make. VR development is a lot different in terms of game design. A lot of games have you be stationary and some have you be able to walk around and they usually have smaller levels due to how much that has to be loaded and actually work with the player. It's an entirely different experience making a VR game, at least from what I have seen. Along with this, I have no idea as to what gameplay mechanics would be fun, and a big part of VR is that you can interact with things in a very realistic way, as I demonstrated earlier with the amazing cubes I added. Well, well, well. Look at who's the short one now. Another VR game I really like is Blade and Sorcery. You get to play around with medieval weapons like swords, bows, and shields, and I want to try to add something similar to that. Of course it won't be to the level of this game, but it's worth a shot. But first, I need to take some notes on like how to make the weapons actually feel cool to use. Yeah, I can definitely take this here. Well, I played enough you know, Breath of the Wild to know how to parry things. This isn't working. Spider-Man time. One sec. Um. Okay, something's not. Watch this. Okay, that was probably just an excuse for me to get to play the game, but the issue with me randomly adding stuff is that the game is just going to become a complete mess, as I have seen this happen with past projects of mine. I get so many ideas for stuff that I want to add into the game, and the game just becomes a collection of features that you want to add. And that's not always a bad thing because it sure is a lot of fun to actually make the game like that, but if you want to have a good end product that knows what it wants to be, you have to be very careful about this. But this is not about the end product, it's about experiencing VR game development and just having fun with it. So that brings up the question, how chaotic can it get? We now have a sword, and fun fact, you can swing it. And we also have a wooden shield. This can block any object except for the fact that this is literally just a holdable box collider. You can do a few cool tricks with it, but it's kind of pointless since there's nothing in the game that actually uses projectiles. Speaking of projectiles... 
A portable camera can easily be toggled on and off to showcase what it sees above your hand, allows you to get another perspective on whatever the heck you're trying to do. These game mechanics don't have much in common, but they are all things I wanted to experiment with in VR, but that brings up the question of how can we combine these features into tiny games? How about dodgeball with a sword? What? Or keep it up with a gun. And take photos, I guess? You can go on top of the Jenga thing. And don't fall over. And don't fall over. Don't fall over. There, okay. Group photo, and by that it's only you. Oh right, this can't take photos. <laughs> and while all of these are great, we need something more scary. Something that makes you feel anxious while playing. So naturally, I gave Jopa the ability to move and made him much taller. In life, they prepare you for a lot of things. Public speaking, exams, taxes. But the one thing they never warn you about is a random blue alien chasing you down with no mossy. Let's do this. It is time to win. Just carefully. Oh no, he's here, okay. Roll quick. Uh, ow! <laughs> ow! Oh no, no Joe, I tried to do this. Even though the gun doesn't do anything, but you know, we can just make a run for it. We should be fine though, cause we did. He just goes through the wall. Wait, he he's going through. <gasps> yeah, after that experience, I don't know what to think anymore. I also got haunted by 3D Jelly Jam, but I'm sure that's not important. Something's not right here. Oh my gosh. I feel threatened. Very, very threatened. And my whole goal with this game was to scare other people, but turns out I just scared myself. While this game is not that immersive, I have discussed how VR can make you feel like you are actually there. The ability to travel to anywhere in the world, and even into fictional worlds from the comfort of our own home is genuinely mind-boggling. And the fact that it's somewhat possible within our lives, albeit a bit clunky, is truly amazing. However, there is one use for VR that I feel beats everything else, and it's connecting with others online. While you can easily talk to online friends all over the world using Discord, you never really get to have something close to a in-person interaction. But, we can get something pretty close to that. Bro, who's that? Hello there, Joba. Yeah, Hello. so, um, this height isn't accurate, we can agree on that, right? This is the avatar, this is not. Uh... Dude. Be strong! They do! Just be I strong! Do. It's fine, we got this, just be strong. Yeah, um, Joba, this is probably not no. a good thing to tell you when you're scared, but look in the mirror down Joba. the hallway. Go quick! Take it! Take it! Joba, quick! Take the- Go! Take the thing! Where is it? No, it's in the sink! Put it on the thing, quick! Oh. Watching virtual reality via a video does no justice as to how real it feels, and meeting Joba actually felt real. It felt like he was there. It felt like I met an online friend. Meeting an online friend in person is not always something that can happen. Distance and a lack of time or money make it really tough. But the ability to see my friends, friends that are mostly a voice in my headphones, friends that I have only ever spoke to from my computer, People that, despite never seen in person, have had a truly massive and positive impact on my life, all with a giant piece of technology on my head, is still so crazy to me. It just goes to show how small of a world it really is nowadays.